First, we want to get access to the patient. Boop. Still sticking, huh? Bad bit tire. You have been promoted to impromptu working chair. Me and my work chair set up. We're gonna get taken to shock out. Shock is this big boy here. We got a few points to disconnect on the bottom side. We got two bolts on either side. I've been soaking these in a penetrating fluid, sway bar link. And also here in the back is gonna be the brake line that clips on. Not a lot to remove, just maybe a little tough considering her age. Let's get to it. All right, so on the top, we have a 17 mil. Okay. It's going slowly and apprehensively. My heart always holds a little bit when I go to crack open a shock because I don't know what to expect. All right, and then when we secure the other side with a 17 mil, make sure that it's not spinning. All right, let's give the same treatment to this guy in the bottom. See how sunny his disposition is. All right. Alrighty, broken free, the backside spinning too. So I shouldn't be expecting too much of a fight there. For the brake retainer, you have this little bit of a clip there. You can use a screwdriver. I have a chisel handy. Give it a few taps, you see it starts to slide out. And then we can just wiggle it free, pop it out. Little guy looks like that, and he's just wedged in there. Here we have a 14 mil. Yep. So, same thing, just gonna try it out, <laughs> see how, uh, what kind of mood that bolt is in this morning. Get a wrench on there. I'll be honest, I'm being a little lazy, so I'm ready to get the breaker bar out. And it's feeling good. Here, I'll be honest, it's a little bit of a cheat. I changed the sway bar link last year. So it's a little bit easier to go with. Usually you need to put a hex uh, Allen key in there, excuse me. I believe it's a 5.5 mil. But as you see, this one is behaving. And this is the only thing that's been behaving on this car, so I'm gonna take it, <laughs> amen. Small miracles. Make sure we don't lose this guy. All right, there we go. Just gonna let the wrench lock up into the body. So I don't have to hold the wrench. Now I can just work this guy off. And this is a heaven sent. Because on the other side, I had to use a grinder to get the sway bar link out. And to be fair, get him out I'm still being a little hesitant to start making a lot of noise 
All right, now. Here we do want to do the same thing. A little bit of consideration on the bottom bolt. We have the brake hose, which I definitely don't want any surprise surprises with. So flip the wrench to the open side, prop the other side into the wheel well here. And actually it's coming off a bit easier. Small surprises. Oh man. I almost feel like I don't want to sing the praises because I know at any second any one of these bolts can start misbehaving. But everything is going surprisingly well. Another side took three hours. There's grinders, hammers, chisels. Boom, nut off. We'll pull those out. He's disconnected. Brake line I do not want to use any force with. Although it's been sitting in there for a while, I'm just gonna wiggle it out gently. On the top side, we have three 14 mil bolts. Here's one, another one over here to the side, right there. And one behind the seatbelt retractor right in here. And to be honest, I'm going to move the camera. Yeah, the breaker bar is a little overkill, but to be frank, I prefer making the job easy. There we go. It didn't seat all the way, I was kind of skipping on top. But now it's doing what it should. Great. Now the good news is you are going to get three new bolts. So if God forbid one of these bolts does drop in, which happened on the other side, but when I took it off, drop down and in into, I don't know, you know, the infinite void that we all have in our cars. If that does happen, your new shock is going to have a new bolt on it. So not the end of the world. And either way, use the new nut. has a new nut on it. Use the new nuts. Because they're just in better condition. And right, that one's off. Yeah, here we can ready to go by hand. And that's it. Those three are out. Here we have a shot of all three. One, two, and three. And now that I have them unscrewed, I can drop the shock out on the bottom. And drop the, drop the shock out on the bottom. Once I take these two guys out, home stretch for the uninstall. Okay. Didn't expect that to go jamming in there and the bolt to go shooting out at the camera. Bolt is crusty. I'm gonna go over this later gently with the wire dress to clean up the threads. One thing we can do take some of that pressure off the shock right because right now we have the knuckle trying to come outwards from the <clears throat> lateral arms and the trailing arms so all I'm gonna do is just prop it up with a jack here in the front to take off some of that weight off of it and I have a great little stubby jack for this From here, we'll just start jacking. We don't need a lot of pressure. 
just enough that I can start sliding things out more or less easy. All right, now that the hard part is one to get the brake line out, all I did was just drop the shock down a little bit and the brake line went out the top as the shock went down. Here's our new shock. Before you get ready to install it, make sure you take off the three 14 millimeter bolts, 14 millimeter bolts that you have on the top side. We're gonna take out the old one and compare it with the new one because you always wanna make sure that you got the right parts, right? Problems could be at the ordering house, at the parts uh, department. You never know. I haven't found many, but just to be safe, I prefer to check. So that's our new shock. Hey, buddy. Oh, he likes me. And here we go with our old shock. <laughs> oh my lord all right now let's compare old to new i'm going to be looking mostly at mounting points so i want to make sure that my three mounting points are the same on the bottom the one for the bolts the sway bar link and the brake hose uh, the height is the same the positioning of the three bolts on top are the same we're good and good God, just look at this thing. This is what 25 years and 167,000 miles will do to a shock. You, you did well. We salute you. On to the next life with you. This part is tricky, and I am recruiting the help of my wife for this because God brace her soul. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the shock in through the wheel well and the three spokes are gonna poke in through the wheel well. Now, feeding in and also threading on top can be a real pain in the butt. Yes. Now, I'm just holding it up. I felt that I got in. And even if she can get one on, then that's already 90% of the battle. She's a sweetheart, she's gonna feed two on. And now the shock is gonna be held in place. All right, now on the top, I don't wanna go tightening anything in quite yet. I'm going to take the opportunity while it still has some play in here to put everything into place. Ironically enough, the brake line popped into place. What a winner. Okay, next is feng shui the bolts in, the big 17 mil buggers. Mm, we went this way. So for this, I'm going to get a little bit of a cheat. My thinking is if such, we use this bit pound them out in the past and this bit is smaller so it'll be a little bit easier to wiggle around once we get it in we can position boom wow that works super well okay now the extender in there the top side is still being tricky for this I think I may use the jack just to jack up the uh, drum and the knuckle up a little bit. And the jack up. I can you see it lining up. Boom. So it lines up perfectly. That jack approach has saved me so many times. God, I love it. Alrighty. Now here we're just going to go piece by piece and go just about attaching everything. I'm not trying to tighten anything down until I made sure I made all the connections. And we really have the majority of them done. All right, here's the only thing that's left to do 
and just to be tightening everything up. And just again, 14 mil nut for the sway bar link. Here, we have our two 17 mils. I'm gonna put a 17 mil on this side, a, a wrench. And here, I'm just gonna use the socket to tighten these in. These are one nice and tight. Enjoy those torque specs. And last bit, we wanna put in that retaining clip for the brake hose in the back. We're gonna get a brake hose low, and then we can just push this in there. And we'll be all set. Here we tighten down to three nuts. As it is, I misplaced one of the new nuts. The new nuts were 15 millimeter. So I ended up utilizing one of the old ones. Not my favorite approach, but if you have to, it does work because the threading is the same, just the outside of the nut was different. So tighten those down, not too hard, just hand tight with the socket. Okay, that's nice and snug. Just be careful when you do it and not to hit that brake line hose because that could be a headache in itself. Now this guy, when feeding in the brake hose, one thing I recommend, pull the hose itself lower and you're gonna come in because the clip is hanging out this way. And you're gonna come in from the bottom. So the hard part of the hose, the hard part of the line is gonna go in through the bottom and then up. And then as soon as it points up, same thing, we will, you're gonna find there's a little bit of a groove on the line. Boom, where this clip can feed into. On this side, I could just squeeze it in with my hands. Uh, the other side, I needed to use uh, something to kind of like hammer it in. Now we're gonna release our jack. And that's it. We're all done. Only thing left to do now is just to put on the wheel and go take it for a test drive. And hopefully not find any surprises. Here, just be safe. I'm gonna brush off the studs on the wheel. Because I'll be honest, this wheel came off quite hesitantly.